Hey everybody, it is a uh, great privilege of mine to talk to a friend. Uh, this is Kook Harrell. Hey everybody. Kook, we go, we go back a few years. We do, absolutely. You know, you know what I remember about meeting you is uh, you just showed up at our church. Uh-huh. And you, you, you actually showed up in the kids ministry area. Do you remember that? Right, I do. Yep. Yep. You had, you had a, you had a kids worship CD. Yeah. And you led worship, and my kids were little, like your kids, and they came home with this CD, and I'm like, "What is that?" And they're like, "Dad, this really cool guy led worship in the kids area." Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I said, "You know, can I listen to it?" And I listened to it on my car ride right to work. <laughs> And I was blown away. Your your name and number was on the CD. So yeah. I just like I called you. I had no idea who you were. Yeah. We had uh, we had barbecue at Williamson Brothers Barbecue. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was that was so, so great, man. We were, you know, we were sitting there eating barbecue. Then I said, you know, tell me who you are. And you're like, well, you know, I, I produce, record, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget. I said so. Have you done anything that I've ever heard? And you're like, well, I, you know, recently did this uh, song called Umbrella. Yeah. And, yeah. I, <laughs> and, and I said, who did that? <laughs> and you said, of all the artists, is, um, you know, Rihanna. And it's girl named Rihanna. Yeah. I've, never, I've never heard of her. So I go home and I ask my kids, they're like, Dad, oh my gosh, you know. That's funny. You're an idiot. But. <laughs> Hey, just so thank you for, for oh. being a patient, gracious friend. Oh man, thank you. It's it's an honor. It's an honor for us to be able to call each other friends and and know that you know we haven't spoken in a while, but just to know that at any point we can always connect and catch up and know where the kids are, know where the family is, and all yeah. that. Hey, where am I catching you? Where are you? So I'm in Los Angeles right now. I have a studio here, um, and it's called Paradise Sound. Um, it's, uh, it's my studio and it's also, uh, a house as well. Uh, uh, the studio is detached from the house. So when I come to town, I stay here in the house, I stay at the house and I'm able to walk right over here into paradise, into the studio, get my work done. And I'm based in Florida. So what I do is I, I, um, split my time. I try to come out here, get my work done, load up all my work for two weeks and then go home to Florida and just chill out with my wife and, and daughters for like two weeks. Yeah, very cool. Then come three, on back. Three, three daughters, but the best part is your wonderful wife, Stevie. Yep. Uh, man, you are so out of your league there for that. Absolutely, 100%. Stick by you. Can, are you able to tell us, uh, like, maybe a few of the artists that you're currently working with? Yeah. Uh, right. So right now I'm working with uh, an, an R&B art, R&B pop artist named Kaylani, um, who's amazing. Um, a new a new artist. He's been around for, I'd say, a year or so. Pretty pretty um, large artist. His name is uh, Lil Nas X, working with the Backstreet Boys right now and always uh, ongoing with Rihanna. We're always cool. in the studio cutting stuff. Very cool. Yeah, I, I always tell you that I like to live vicariously through you, you know, by, uh, by, <laughs> by, by catching up on who you're working with. But now watch this. All these okay. stats, right? Thanks. You have worked with, this is going to take me, you know, a deep breath. Oh my goodness. You have worked with Rihanna, Mary J. Blige, Chris Brown, Celine Dion, The Dream, Justin McCartney, Usher, Beyonce, Jimmy Fox. Dang. You did the theme song and the soundtrack to Avatar. Uh, let's see who else. Lord, Backstreet Boys, DJ Khaled, uh, yep. Kanye West, Pentatonic, Cher. Did I mention Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Lionel Richie? Dang. On and on. I mean, Dang. and here's the That's crazy. It is crazy. God, <laughs> God has blessed you, my friend. Yeah, for sure. But watch this. Not only you know have you worked with great people, but you've done it at such high levels. You have won five Grammys. Yes. Yeah. Are those Grammys in Florida or L.A.? They're in Florida. They're okay. at the house in Florida because uh, I think they'd probably get torn up if they were just sitting here at the studio. <laughs> Let me see if I get this right. So you won a Grammy with uh, Mary J. Blige, um, Best Contemporary R&B Album, Growing Pains. Is that right? Yep, yep. And then, um, I mean, Beyonce, you brought it with all the single ladies, right? Best R&B Yep, that was one here. of them. Yep. You killed it. Uh, yeah. Only Girl in the World, Best Dance Recording with Rihanna. Yeah. And then I think you did uh, Unapologetic, Best Urban Contemporary Album with Rihanna as well. So Correct. Yep. Uh, but you know what? Yeah. All of all of this stuff, I'm just I'm just gonna toss it aside, right? 
Please do. <laughs> because, because you are a man of great character. You're a man of faith. Thank you. I go back to, uh, man, you did, you did some work with Tommy Walker. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I remember walking on the beach, listening to old school Tommy Walker. And all of a sudden, you know, in my headset, he's like, kook, kook's going <laughs> to. I'm like, kook, is anybody that. else named kook? And it was you. <laughs> and then you helped with Promise Keepers. I mean, you led worship. Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't. I was. I was one of the uh, vocalists on the worship team for probably, I'd probably say like five years, um, with with the Maranatha uh, worship teams. And as a matter of fact, Tommy, uh, Tommy is the person that connected me with with Maranatha uh, slash Promise Keepers, and Tommy was my mentor as a worship leader. So I got saved at Tommy's church at Christian Assembly here in California. Um, probably, man, that's like 20 years now, maybe. Wow. Wow. And, um, yeah, got saved there at Tommy's church and watched him. And I, I didn't even know what a worship leader was. And I was like, man, I, I, I was like, that looks amazing. And it's like, it, it just all came, everything lined up the way it should have. Like God had a purpose for sure. Yeah. And yeah. had me at a place where I was not, I was, wasn't interested in doing secular music anymore. And um, God had led me and Stevie and my and the family to Christian Assembly. I saw Tommy, and God just started moving. And we, yeah. you know, shortly after that, shortly after we started going to CA, we got saved. And then shortly after that, we got launched into ministry right away, yeah. children's music ministry. Yeah, yeah. I gosh, what. And what great humility that takes, right? I mean, to to to, to go to go into children's music ministry. Yeah. And and you have you have all the connections and the family and the talent to do otherwise, but you you were humble enough to take that on, and I, I think the Lord has blessed that. Yeah, I you know I think there isn't a day that goes by um, that I don't think about that when I walk. You know, when I just walk around when I'm just looking at my life, you know, I look at this place that I have here in LA. Now I look at our home that we have in, in, um, in Florida. I just look at everything, every aspect of my life. And I always think about that. And I always hear that in my spirit. I always hear God saying, you know, um, that, you know, that he blessed me for that, for, for the obedience of doing that, because at that particular time, no one was, no one was doing that. Like, doing children's ministry was considered, um, you know, everybody wanted to be a part of the main worship team. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to be, wants to be in the main sanctuary to be a part of that because that's where God, you know, for what everybody says, that's where God is moving. Mm -hmm. But what, what God had showed me, he was, it was amazing. Like he, he just, he said, that's where I want you to be. And the way he had, the way he called me, and shaped my mind and my heart and my spirit at that particular time made me extremely open to whatever it was that he was saying and whatever, whatever, wherever he was directing me to be, that's where I wanted to be. And uh, when he, when he showed me the, the kids ministry, I was like, absolutely. It's like, I can do that. And he showed me really, really early on that, uh, that that's where, everybody should desire to be, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, so like the, the biggest thing that, the thing that really solidified all that was I started leading the kids in worship. Um, like I said, I didn't even know what a worship leader was. I was just under, I was just going, Oh, well that guy, Tommy, he, he put, sing some songs for everybody. I could just do that with the kids. So I'll take some of his songs, I'll program them and just sing those songs for the kids, sing those songs with the kids on Sunday. And I started doing that. We launched the uh, the Christian Assembly had launched a new children's program, um, and I was the worship leader. So I'm leading the kids in worship. And the like at the second or third week I did it, I'm standing up there leading the kids, still not even knowing like what the impact was or what you know what this whole thing was. I'm leading the kids, and the kids are seriously like they're worship. Obviously, these are kids who who are, you know, in Christian homes, but all this is new to me. So they got their hands raised and, and singing. And I'm, and I'm just going, this is crazy. Like watching all this. <laughs> yeah. And I will never, ever forget. God said, God, it's like God had slowed everything down 
and he had me looking at everything that was going on in the room. He said, look at, look at these children right now. Look at everything that's happening right now. Look at how these kids are entering in my presence. I'm using you to lead these children into my presence. And he said, don't ever forget, there will never be anything more important that you will ever do in your life than this moment. Wow. And I went, whoa, I wow. get it. Yeah, and that solidified, that was at the beginning of it too. That was the beginning yeah. of uh, doing worship. Yeah, and you still um, think about that. You still think about that. This, this is the thing. Oh, absolutely. That was the thing, 100%. Like everything, because what it did was it created uh, out of a number, a number of things that happened. What it did was it created a real, a real platform to, to view everything else from. So if that's the ultimate thing, everything else is just whatever. Like all the stats, all the, the awards, whatever. Like that stuff is great. But that stuff doesn't define my identity. What defines my identity was that moment. It's good. Because what happens, because with that, at that point, and this is how I process it, at, with that being the foundation, nothing that I ever experience here on this planet can ever take away from my identity. Because my identity is not based on anything other than that moment. And who can take that from me? Nobody. I can only take that from me by going, well, you know, by getting to a place where I go, well, I don't believe in that anymore. And yeah. like, who's doing that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, I mean, brother, it makes great sense. And it's just refreshing for me to hear. And I want I wanna dive in uh, to, to a little, to a great difficulty that, uh, that you experienced, I think four or so years ago that, um, I mean, did it, you know, you, you had, a, you had a struggle, you had a battle with cancer, right? Yeah. Prostate cancer. That is like had my surgery three years ago and I rang the bell for being cancer free, uh, two years now, um, on May, f my two year checkup was May 4th. Yep. Okay. All clean. So, you know, go back to that identity that you have in, in Christ. Yeah. Was that ever threatened in, in any of that? Like, absolutely not. How did you, you know, your career is like just exploding. Yeah. And then this explodes in your body. How did, yeah. how did, how did you process that? The biggest thing was just not, was, was focusing on. So here's, here's the thing with that being my foundation and all the praying that I do, I'm trying to, I just want to, I want to sum it up for you in the most simple way. All the praying that I've done and praying for other people and uh, thinking about my relationship with God, listening to what God has been saying to me, listening to how he covers me, how he's my ultimate father and um, all that, like over all these years is, was the foundation to really have your faith and whether or not you really believe that tested or really not I, I, and i i don't like to for me myself i don't like to say tested i like to say put in motion okay. because it's like put in motion and accelerate it in a way to really confirm to not to anyone else but for yourself whether you believe it or not i i call it like my rubber rubber meets the road faith um, and that was definitely one of them. That was one of those times where I had to just, I literally had to sit down and go, well, you either believe that he's got you covered or, or you don't. I mean, if he said, I've given my angels charge over, to, over you to keep you safe in all your ways. If he said that, then he must mean it. And I believe it. So now let's do that. You following me? I am, but okay, you know, there, there are people and, and believers cook with faith that, yeah. um, that they can go the opposite direction that you, sure. like sure. you just described this, this, um, this very difficult season of your life that, that actually accelerates your faith. Sure. Yes. Other people go the exact opposite direction. Mm -hmm. how, how did you, how did you not do that? I mean, what, what, what was the, 
I mean, what was surrounding you? You know, what kept your mindset? Because, I mean, I, I followed you. I saw pictures. I mean, it, it, it looked like it was a tough road, you know. Yeah. But what kept your mindset in the right place? The bottom line, the thing that kept my mindset in the right place was my, uh, my just, all, just knowing that, yeah, I've got to do the treatment. I've got to do surgery and all that stuff. But his word is the final word. Like, it's either... I either believe it or I don't. So this was the moment for me to go, all right, well, let's, let's do it. Like you said that we're going to get beyond things. So let's do it. Like if my dad, if my dad told me, you know, growing up, we're going to the baseball game on Saturday and you go, Oh my God, we're going to the baseball game. Saturday comes and go, well, we can't go this week. Can we go next week? And a kid, as a kid, as a, as a innocent kid, you go, Yes, we can. We're going next week. And all, and however many times he says we, we, he cancels, we're still believing that at some point we're going to the game. That's how I view my relationship with God. Like I have way too many journals. I've had God talk to me way too many times for me to go, for me to go the other way. And this is just my makeup. Yeah. I know that everybody's different, but my makeup is you know, I know for a reason, like God called me into, God called me and then launched me into full-time ministry all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was looking at, there has to be a reason for this. Yeah. What is the reason? Well, one of the reasons is I want, I want you to show you, I want to show you, this is God saying, I want to show you that I love you and I got you. And through you and because you took heart and take heart to my word and my promises to you in such childlike manner, I can use you, if you, as you continue to do that, I can use you to show people that I'm really real and I really still do this stuff. Does yeah, that make yeah. sense? <laughs> it, make, and, and it makes great sense. There's nobody in my life that is more positive than you are. And then, and then what, what you always have done, Kook, is like, you, you never, you never seem to like knock doors down. You just kind of, you just, you just like mm -hmm. wait for it to come. Like, you, yeah. just, you just, that's, that's your belief system. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. Cause I can't abuse you too much longer. <laughs> um, you know, we work with a lot of nurses and caregivers. Yeah. And they work with catastrophic patients, spinal cord mm -hmm. injuries, brain injuries, paraplegic, quadriplegic very difficult situations. And many of the caregivers live lives that are just, I mean, they, yeah. they care for everybody else except themselves. So, yeah. so there's three things that that's kind of your um, platform, <laughs> you know, that, that you, that you uh, uh, um, like to project, like to speak about. And there are these things and I, and I want to hear from each one of these briefly, you know, cause okay. I, I probably preach a sermon on each one, but <laughs> Uh, Sorry if I talk too much. <laughs> but no, 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 no. I just I, I want to respect your time because somebody I'm good. coming into the studio. But, no, I'm good. But these three things: always be professional. You know what? What would you say to nurses about that? Be patient at all times. What would you say to caregivers about that? And then it's not about you, which I think mm. a lot of caregivers understand at some level. But but unpack those just just briefly. Always be professional. Let's start there. Okay. Always be professional as a caregiver, right? Well, I, you know, as, as a person, being a person that has gone through a cancer journey, who has gotten on the other side of cancer, having had to deal with my, my caregivers at the City of Hope out here in LA, and my doctors who did my surgery in Atlanta, um, professional, like all of them, like I was, all of them were extremely professional. And what I loved about it was that, especially when I got to City of Hope out here, they were, they were all considerate and they were all, they all, they're, oh, here's what, the, what it is. Bedside manner was absolutely amazing. The, like one of the reasons, one of the first things that happened to me when I came out here to City of Hope to have my, to start my radiation treatment, I got there. I had a, a, a patient advocate meet me at the parking lot, walk me into the hospital, walk me from, from uh, oncology to m the meeting with my oncologist to downstairs to the, to the meeting with the radiologist. And when I got upstairs and, and 
when I sat in the chair, I just broke out in tears. Wow. And, and, and the reason why, and the nurse would say, oh, baby, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to take care of this. We're going to get you beyond this. And I, and I told her, I was like, you don't understand. I'm not crying because of the cancer thing. I, that's already worked out. That's not in my hands. What I'm crying about is the fact that God loves me so much to put these people, to put you guys in my life to carry me from this stage to this stage. Like that's overwhelming. That was overwhelming joy. So the being professional thing is to just, is I love the fact that they see thousands of people every day, but their professionalism in their bedside manner and also just how they communicate with me, they didn't, they didn't, I never felt like, I never felt like I was a number. I went to a place in Florida which is why I ended up out here. And I felt like in my spirit, because I was listening, I don't feel like I'm going to be a number. Can't, no, not, I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a number. I'm supposed to be a miracle. So being professional as a caregiver is just don't, not to forget that we're people and there's all kind of stuff going on in our heads. So, and anything can set us off, you know, set us, set a patient off to be like, to lose hope. Man, you just framed a professional caregiver as an extension of God's love. Man, for sure. Wow. For sure. That's powerful. 100%. 100%. Powerful, powerful. How about, how about be patient at all times? Being patient at, at all times as a caregiver is allowing my thing with patients um, that I would see when I would see my doctors. This is another thing that blew me away with my oncologist and my radiologist. The very first meeting, my oncologist, she sat, she sat with me and let me ask as many questions as I wanted. So I never, ever feel like, because I'm really good with, with interaction with people. And I can, tell, I can tell when somebody's pushing me to get, to get to the next point. Or, you know what I mean? I can tell when that's happening. And she, I never, and I never, ever, like I've been, going to, I've been going to City of Hope for two years now, every other month. And I never, ever, ever feel like um, my caregiver. And I, I had a team of caregivers. Um, it was about thirty of them. And we, and at the end of the, at the end of all my treatment, at the end of all my treatment, we all had a had a, an event together. But I never, with all of them, I never ever felt that they weren't patient with me, and they weren't there to listen to my questions or to talk me through or when I was having those, those God moments laying in the machine, you know, having tears and they go, man, what's going on? I'm going, I'm just blown away by how, what God is saying to me as I lay here. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, and, and that was a testimony to them. And, and I'll say this, that patient being patient is not only for the patient, being patient is, is, I know even though you're going with the system and you're working, be patient for yourself because you never know what God may be trying to say to you through that person that you're caring for. That's good. You know what I mean? Like I, I, had, I had a number, because this is just how I live. Like this is what, I had a number of moments where I was able to speak and I knew for sure what I was speaking was something that God wanted to say to whoever was in that room. And I could see people's eyes go, who the heck? And, there, and, there, and, I, and I believe there were people who weren't believers as well. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't for me to, to find out or anything like that. My, my thing was, I got you on this cancer journey. I've got you covered. But through that, there's some people over here that I need to touch. Just be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good, good, good. All right, it's not about you. What would you say in uh, this this third? I mean, this is a big one, right? Like Rick Warren starts his 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 mega book, Purpose Driven Life, but with that phrase, "It's not about you." Yeah. What do you say to caregivers? Yeah. Well, I would say if if you know if it's a caregiver who is who does see themselves as an extension of God's hand and His power, is to be at a place mentally, heart wise. And just emotionally to let him work, let him work. Cause as, it, as he works, 
as they as they get out of the way it's the same thing with me here as a as a as a music producer i know how to get my job done but i also know that when something when god is moving in my spirit i know oh wait a second something really intense is going on not intense god's trying to do something through in the spirit so let's let me just recognize and if if i feel him going just slow down slow down slow down because i want to orchestrate a conversation that will change someone's life and you and as a professional i have to go as a professional and see myself as an extension of god's grace his power and his word and his moving i have to go okay hey guys let's just let's take it easy let's, let's let and i but but i don't know who i'm around so i have to do it in a way to where it it relates to them to where i'm not going hey god's going to do something because what happens is i could be in a room full of non-believers but somebody is on could be on a search and god just wants to orchestrate one small moment for me to say one small thing for them to go ah this was the confirmation that i've been looking for but i need, didn't even know it was going to come today did you know you're going to preach a sermon today did, did, did were you aware of these no I'm like, always just ready to say what. I mean, <laughs> come on, that that you know. I mean, we live in the West. It's all about doing. Mm -hmm. It's all about tasks, you know. Mm -hmm. And typically, when it's all about doing a task, it's all about me. So for mm -hmm. you to go to to nurses, recognize mm -hmm. the moment, and that it may not be about about you. Yeah, and I honestly, Alan, I honestly believe, I believe with my whole heart, not just because I think it, but because I've experienced it and I experience it every single day, that when we do that, when we operate like that, that's when we see miracles. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. When, that's when we see the hand of God doing things because we've, really, we've honestly, we've truly gotten to a point to where we just go, man, you got it. And, 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 I move, and we move forward with that knowing, with knowing that that is what it's all about. We're just instruments. Like when I say, I, I remember saying this when I first got saved. Oh, music is just a vehicle for me to touch people's lives. Like when I heard that and it registered in here, I truly believe that. And that's how I live. It's like, yeah, I got to be in here. I got to do this. I got to, you know, Jesus was a, what, what, uh, uh, what, tent, tent maker or what was it? He's a carpenter. A carpenter. Yeah. So he did, he did all, he did what he had to do, but there was a greater movement happening. And that's how I view my life. And I, and I pray that, I pray that everybody that, that hears my voice in this, in this interview and people that I come in contact with every day hears that and by the, by the Holy Spirit gets that and moves in that. They will. Real fast and I'll, I'll, yes. we'll be done. There, there, are, there are two caregivers. Um, uh, this young gal, she's 20 years old. Her name is Miracle. Okay. And then there's another gal, man, she is killing it. They're both in Charlotte, North Carolina. Her name is Shaquila. Yeah. And I just want you to, to just fast, say something like just straight to Miracle and Shaquila okay. that, uh, you know, recognizes that. I mean, they're, they're just killing it and nobody knows they, they work wow. with this, uh, Mr. This patient, I, can't say his name. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they just, they're just doing such a great job. What would you say? Wow. I would say to Miracle and Shaquilla, right? Miracle and Shaquilla, continue to do what you do, what you're doing. Continue to be a vessel of God's power. He sees exactly what you're doing. He sees how you're doing it. And he is so uh, loving the fact that you are walking and doing what you do by the power of his spirit continue to do what you do um continue to be encouraged and get your encouragement continue to get your encouragement from him because the word says that promotion doesn't come from the north south east or west promotion comes from <clears throat> from the lord and when you believe in that and you walk in that there is nothing on this planet that can stop you from continuing to move in the way you move because everything on this, on this planet is designed to knock you off your game, to get you to the point to where you're doubting and <clears throat> not being confident about what it is you're doing. But when you're sold on that theory and that process, you'll always be in the game. <clears throat> That's what I say.
I know, I know you have a microphone somewhere in that studio. Can you just like drop it? That, I mean, that was, that was <laughs> so funny. Dude, that was, that was so good. That was so good. Hey, did you write, did you write the McDonald's uh, theme song? No, uh-uh. But you know who I did? wish. You know I just, I, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of different versions, but my uncle Butch Stewart had written one of the, um, like one of the, major ones that was that was used uh, that you ba -da -ba -ba -ba, i'm loving it your uncle wrote that yep morris <laughs> butch stewart yeah how cool is that yeah hey listen i gotta let you go thank you so much coop for talking right, my uh, just so good so good tell your family i said hey i will and you do the same for me love you guys and it's it is great to see your face and to uh connect let's let's do it again i need to come to atlanta so we can get some more barbecue yes you do thanks man <laughs> okay thanks